1982, America was stunned by headlines such as this in Newsweek magazine. The Tylenol scare. What was it all about? Poisonings. Turned out that a number of people unfortunately had died because they had purchased Tylenol capsules in pharmacies and uh, some of these capsules were tainted with cyanide. This was a criminal activity. It had nothing to do with the manufacturer. Someone had purchased the bottles, opened the capsules, replaced some of the active ingredient with cyanide, put it back on the shelf, and some unfortunate people purchased it. The criminal was never caught. We don't know what the motive was. So in any case, the manufacturer was not at fault, and uh, the active ingredient was off the hook. Now, that active ingredient is very interesting. Acetaminophen, or acetylaminophenol. That's the chemical name. And you can see where the name Tylenol comes from. It actually has very interesting history. The uh, production of Tylenol goes back to the 1800s, as depicted in this article. Note that it is in German, even though the research was done at Johns Hopkins University in the US. But in those days, Germany was the hotbed of science, and German journals were the, the place where everything was uh, published if you wanted to get uh, attention. So acetaminophen has been around for a long time. It is a great painkiller. Uh, it does not reduce inflammation like aspirin, but uh, it is still today the most widely used uh, drug in the world. There are some caveats, uh, because if it's uh, used in uh, more than the recommended dose, which is three to four grams maximum a day, it can have an effect on the liver. And uh, liver toxicity due to Tylenol is not uncommon. And uh, this is the reason why emergency rooms stock a chemical called acetylcysteine, because that can reverse the toxicity of, uh, of Tylenol. But uh, this terrible episode back in 1982 actually had a silver lining in its cloud. How so? because it alerted manufacturers to the ease with which products were tampered with. And this resulted in the development of bottles that are tamper-proof. And you will have noticed that whenever you purchase uh, medications such as acetaminophen today, uh, it will have a plastic wrapping around it. You will have some difficulty opening it. There'll be instructions on you know, pressing down, etc. There will usually be an aluminum foil that you have to strip off. And uh, sometimes the opening becomes a headache, which is exactly what you're trying to take the painkiller for. So today, thanks to that horrific episode back in 1982, we have the tamper-proof bottle. So you never know where such disasters will lead.